As you're turning there, I want to thank all of the co-laborers that are helping set up the ARC team, those that help with all of the cords, uh, Adrian, Miss Maggie for YouTubing this, and those of you that are wanting to help volunteer, Alex, Soul, and others on the Spanish translation, Jeremy and uh, Mr. Gio in terms of pro presenter, uh, we could use more uh, help from those of you that aren't serving anywhere, uh, would appreciate your, your help. Tell me if you have verse 19. Not really a lot of you, I'll wait for you. We don't put the uh, scriptures on the overhead for you. Do you know why? Tell me why. I'm not going to go to a church where people don't have a Bible. At least newcomers will give you a few weeks. Uh, but I want you to have a Bible and learn your Bible. Uh, we're not going to uh, make it that easy on you. You're going to have to become familiar with God's Word. And uh, th through repetition, it will bring that to pass. Verse 19, one more time. Tell me if you have it. Yes. Now Paul begins to levy apostolic fathering to his own church, uh, the Corinthians, as well as to you and I. So let the apostolic papa uh, speak to you and I today concerning this area. He said, did you not know that what? Body. Your body is what? The temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. He says, which is of God, and you are not your own anymore. That's enough for most of us to go home with. <laughs> Underlining the fact that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Verse 20, for you have been bought with a price. Therefore glorify God, where? Hmm. In your body and in your spirit, which is God's. Now, the individual that uh, almost passed away. It's three children, a wife, and uh, it could have been uh, something of tremendous pain. Uh, but fortunately, uh, for God's mercy, uh, the individual... Uh, is alive and is doing much better now. Uh, this situation could have been elim uh, 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 eliminated. What is it? Is that right? A little tired today. Where am I? Could have been prevented uh, through um, a few things. One of which uh, we have shared with you if he just would have known his numbers. What do I mean by that, uh, Christian? I mean that you need to know what your blood pressure is. I need a good Methodist nod. You need to know what your blood pressure is. Don't be a silly saint. And say, oh, God's got me. Yeah, he's got you and he's given you a brain. Use your brain. You need to know your sugar uh, count. You need to know whether you have the preemptive happenings or the workings of diabetes in your life. If you don't have $60, I personally will give you 60 bucks to get, go get your blood checked. Don't be embarrassed. Come up, I'll give it to you today. You can go down to uh, any of these places and they'll run your blood and tell you your numbers. This individual had skyrocketing blood pressure. He had sugar diabetes that gave onset uh, to cellulitis, and he almost passed away. Could have been prevented from a small little pill. Oh, you mean God allows pills? Yes, he allows pills, brother. My secretary in Seattle, a small petite fantastic woman of God, uh, had skyrocketing uh, blood pressure that did not and would not move through laying on of hands of healing nor of deliverance. So we moved to the progressions. Lay hands on for healing. No manifestation of victory. We move where? Let me hear your voices. We move where? 
You move to deliverance. You know demons create sickness and disease? Did you know demons create sickness and disease? We cast them out of organs. We cast them out of colons. We cast them out of body parts. The spirit of a man and a woman in the soul. We tear them off nervous systems. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people have been delivered from disease and sickness. Christian, go through the progressions. Come up and let them anoint you with oil and pray, James says, for healing. Two, if there's no manifestation of victory, move to what? Move to what? Deliverance and see if it's demonic activity in your bloodline or in your life. Three, then now we look to Luke the physician. Let's turn, 1 Timothy chapter 4. I don't want to bury any more people. I've buried ministers. I have buried lay people. I don't want to bury any more people if it can be prevented. 1 Timothy 4.8. Tell me if you have it. Paul writing to Timothy, he said, bodily exercise, King James says, it profiteth a whole bunch. Oh, you don't have your Bible yet. <laughs> this will help some of us that have a hard time getting to the gym. Bodily exercise profiteth what? Little, but godliness profiteth unto all things. Did you hear, Saint? I said, he said, exercise, bodily exercise, profiteth how much? Little. Say it again, how much? Little. But godliness profiteth unto all things, having the promise of life that is now, is, and of that which is to come. So now let me pull out a few things just in that verse. Which is more important, uh, physical exercise for your body or spiritual exercise for your own soul? Listen, spiritual exercise trumps bodily exercise. Now, don't allow uh, physical exercise to trump spiritual exercise. Should not be a saint that is more consumed with your physical body than your spiritual body. Say, Lord, if you've given me a discipline to develop physically or to be motivated for my earthly temple... Won't you grant me and grace me to be motivated for my spiritual life and my spiritual temple? Who's listening? You woke up, you came here, might as well listen. I mean, you're here. Might as well open up and say, Lord, what does thou have for me today? Come on. Now, he doesn't say physical exercise is of no value. He says it has value. It does have value for you because you are the temple of what? The Holy Ghost. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And it is important you take care of your body. So Paul is underlying the fact that your physical body is important. Should you know your numbers? I'll give you one more scripture. 1 Timothy 5.23 Now, should your physical exercise, should it trump your spiritual exercise? So when you have choices to make, whether you're going to give to God's Spirit and, and learn to pray and learn to read and learn to devote yourself to Him, it has to trump the work of your physical body. Right? Come on, right? Verse 23, tell me if you have it. Paul said to Timothy in his uh, life here, don't drink any water for a while, but drink a little what? Well, that's good ammo for you wine nippers. <laughs> you can tell somebody as you're swigging down a third or a fourth glass, hey, I'm just Bible here. <laughs> Turn to someone and tell him I'm a strong man of the word. Go ahead and tell him. See that? Yeah. 
Yeah, that extra glass was because I'm, I'm following God's word. <laughs> Have a little wine for your stomach's sake and, and often your infirmities. Okay, well, Paul, why didn't you come lay hands on him? Why didn't you come command healing? Your handkerchief was healing people. Peter's shadow was healing people. Why don't you just come and lay your apostolic hand and heal your, your mentor or one who's you're mentoring? He says, not always is God going to use uh, the laying on of hands. Not always is healing going to come through deliverance. Like a good quarterback, you go through the progressions. You're underneath. You're already looking at the tight ends. You're looking at the linebackers. You're looking at the defensive backs. And you'll have three or four progressions that you begin to look through and find the opening for your receiver. Same thing spiritually. You go through the progressions. Now, okay, nothing has manifested victoriously in the prayer of healing. Nothing's happened in terms of deliverance. Then I go to Luke the physician and you take a small blood pressure pill for your blood pressure. And don't let any Christian tell you otherwise. Right? Last one, and you could note 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 7. King Hezekiah was dying, and God sent Isaiah the prophet and said, Now take some figs and put it on his stomach. He's dying, and I want you to heal him. Old message just on that passage, I'll just give you the end result, was that King Hezekiah was healed in his sickness and God granted him 15 more years of life. Extended his life because of Hezekiah's humility. Now, all of that to say, this individual is getting better and he is part of our body and we give thanks to God. Two, you have been asked to know your know your numbers. That okay? Tell me the progressions. If you're sick or have disease happening in your life, what is number one? Come up and ask for prayer and healing. Wait before you run to the medicine cabinet. Okay? Two, we move to deliverance. May take a while for us to get you. God will keep you until we get you. And we have seen tremendous, tremendous, tremendous victory in deliverance over disease and sickness. And then number three, what is it? What is it? Hey, some of you have glasses. Well, why didn't God heal your eyes? If he hasn't healed your eyes, I'm going to Luke. Right? Right? Don't be ashamed, don't be embarrassed, and then keep contending uh, for healing in your life. That sound okay? I command long life over you in Jesus' name. Jeremiah 29, 11, he says that you would have, listen, an expected end. Not an unexpected end. Not a tragedy. Not an accident. I bind every accident that would take your life unexpectedly. I command long life over you. Long life over your children. Come on, long life over your children's children's children. I command a generational tree to come from your life. I command in the name of Jesus every demonic intent would be broken over your life. That fruit would come from you. That you would do the works of God and you would bear fruit even as Psalm says in your old age. Turn to someone and tell them, check your numbers.